In this video, we will find out how patients with neuroendocrine tumor stage 4, previously called carcinoid tumors, are treated. In particular, we will find out what these tumors are, what is stage 4 disease, what symptoms do these tumors produce, what tests are required to help in finding the right treatment, and then the treatment itself. This will be focused mainly on the liver because that is the commonest side of spread of these cancers. So let's look at this cartoon over here. That's the stomach, the small bowel, colon, pancreas, and the liver. And and this cartoon shows the common sites within the abdomen of neuroendocrine tumors, which is the small bowel, colon, the appendix, and the pancreas. And these tend to spread to the lymph nodes, which are kidney-shaped small tissue that, that has immune function and also catches cancer cells. These tumors or cancers can also spread to the liver. These are rare forms of tumors and are uncommon. They originate, as the name suggests, neuroendocrine from a type of tissue that produces chemicals or hormones related to the endocrine system. They exhibit a wide spectrum of behavior. Thankfully, the majority are slow growing so that it may be many years before they come to light. But by by then typically they have bred and some of these tumors may have a genetic component. Tumors are classified according to stages. Early disease that has not spread any small in size is stage one, progressing to through four stages, stage four, which means spread beyond where the tumor arises. So let's look at this picture again. From which it originates, it will be stage one or two. However, when it starts spreading to distant sites such as the liver, then that is stage four. The liver is one of the commonest sites of spread. There could be lung, brain, and bone. In terms of symptoms, they may cause local symptoms such as obstruction of the small bowel or large bowel or they may get, get quite big at the local site causing problems with the pancreas such as pancreatitis or obstruction of the main pancreas tube or those that spread to the liver may cause heaviness in the right upper part of the abdomen below the ribcage, weight loss and loss of appetite. However, less than a third of them produce hormones or chemically active compounds that may cause effects such as the carcinoid syndrome characterized by diarrhea, crampy abdominal pain, spasm in the chest, and flushing. Closely related to this is the carcinoid heart disease, which is a dangerous condition and needs urgent treatment. In terms of what tests are required, there's already another video in the playlist with much more detail. Briefly, these patients would benefit from a biopsy, usually this is taken from the liver, and this determines how aggressive the tumor is by dividing it into three G1, grade one, grade two, and grade three. G1 has the best prognosis, and the tumors are also examined how closely they resemble cell lines that they've originated from. Those that closely resemble tissue that they originated from are called well differentiated. The intermediate group is called moderately differentiated and those that have no resemblance, poor outlook, are poorly differentiated. In general, the G1 correlates with well differentiated, the G2 with the moderate and G3 with the poor, but sometimes there may be interplay between these characteristics. Somatostatin receptor scintigraphy is a very important investigation for stage 4 neuroendocrine tumors. As seen in the picture over here, these tumors have receptor sites for a naturally occurring hormone called somatostatin. This hormone or its modified form is attached to another molecule with radioactivity and then a gamma camera is used to pick up once these molecules attach to cancer cells. One form of it is highlighted over here with a patient where the pictures are taken using a gamma camera at at different times and it shows the affinity, the ability of the tumor cells to take up take up and be attached to somatostatin, which confirms the diagnosis, also shows where in the body these cancer cells are located. In this instance, you can see them in the liver over here and there is some activity here in the pancreas. These can be superimposed on a CT scan. As shown in this picture, the liver is studied with multiple metastases and there are other sites within the abdomen. Superimposition on the CT scan provides a much better location uh, for the tumor site. This test is hugely important also for determining the suitability of patients for certain treatment type other than confirming the diagnosis and cancer location. Finally, blood tests are performed and at times urine tests to find out whether or not the tumors are excreting hormones and to get an idea of the level of these hormones circulating in the blood. Other tests such as conventional CT scan and MRI scans are also performed. Once assessment has been completed, 
and now we've reached the treatment stage of stage 4 disease, it is important to point out that patients with grade 1 disease or early grade 2 disease, which are well to moderately differentiate, these are the best prognosis tumors to treat aggressively. Unfortunately, for the grade 3 disease, chemotherapy may be the only viable option where possible. Almost all patients will benefit from somatostatin or one of its analogs. This is a naturally occurring hormone. It fixates onto the tumor sites. It reduces the hormone output stabilizes further multiplication and at times it may actually cause tumor regression. In terms of further treatment options it is very important to have a good idea about the patient and the tumor and this includes patient fitness and their ability to withstand major treatments such as surgery as well as the location of the tumor and how much it has spread within the liver and other sites and whether all of these sites can be treated including the primary tumor. Now assuming that the primary sites can be treated let's look into surgery which is the favored and the most effective way of treating these tumors for both the primary disease and its metastases to the liver. It is important that surgeons who have an interest and experience in treating these conditions carry out the procedures. These tumors are different from the other variety of tumors that surgeons operate on because they are more solid, their margins are expensile, and they do not infiltrate like other tumors. Hence, you do not need to remove too much of the surrounding liver to remove these tumors. And it is most of the times reasonable just to remove the tumor locally. If local treatment is not feasible, then it is okay to remove parts of the liver wherever possible. Just to illustrate the point about surgeon experience, here are scans of a patient with neuroendocrine tumor affecting the liver. On this side is the preoperative scan showing large tumor deposits. This is the tumor and this is the normal liver. Tumor is on this side, on both sides of the liver, as you can see from this diagram. And this was successfully removed by liver surgery so that one year after uh, the patient was almost disease free. This just illustrates what is possible with modern liver surgery. Surgery may be supplemented by another treatment called ablation. These two can be and often are used together but sometimes ablation may be used alone. Typically this involves placing a probe into the tumor and then increasing its temperature thus destroying the tumor with heat. Microwave is one modality but there are other ways of doing this. So microwave ablation is an effective way of treating neuroendocrine tumors. This can be done at the time of surgery or separately under ultrasound or CT scan guidance. The radiologists can also very cleverly treat these tumors by blocking the blood supply. So for instance this is the main artery supplying the liver and you can see the tributaries going on to supply the, the tumor site and these can be blocked off by plugging them individually so that the tumor cells then lose the blood supply and eventually shrink and die away. Sometimes chemotherapy can be used to blast the tumor through the same technique and apart from chemotherapy radioactive material can also be sprayed directly into the tumor itself to achieve the same objective. When other local treatments are not appropriate and the tumor has spread beyond what can be treated by surgery or other means, then whole body treatments are certainly uh, to be considered speci specifically for the grade one disease and early grade two disease. The latest one that has shown a lot of promise is PRRT, peptide receptor radionuclide therapy. And let's look at how it works. So this is the tumor cell and it has a somatostatin receptor. We talked about this earlier when I was showing you the scans, SRS, the somatostatin receptor scintigraphy. And this is the reason why these scans are important because they uncover or show you whether or not a somatostatin receptor exists on the tumor cells. What we do next is that a somatostatin or a related drug is used to attach a radioactive substance over here and then this is injected into the body so that it attaches onto the cancer cells at the site giving rise to cancer killing beams of radiation that then cause the cancer cell to die ultimately. Patients of course will be candidate for chemotherapy which is a field that is expanding very rapidly and new treatments and drugs are being added to armamentarium on a regular basis. This completes a brief overview of treatment of neuroendocrine stage 4 disease. Please do review other video videos in the neuroendocrine tumor playlist. If you have any comments please do share.